Alright, so now we need to assign holes to the rest of the room, so I'll make holes visible. Now that we've got our shape pretty much cemented, we can go ahead and finish this off. Uh, you want the edges to touch or it'll appear weird in the status monitor. So up here we have electrical, our engine room, engineering, make this the utility room. You know what, I will extend this all the way down, make this an access shaft, looks like it's just going to have to be central access shaft, and then I'll delete the hatch there, uh, but leave the, I meant to leave the platform so that people can still walk through here. All right. make our reactor room We'll just call it an access passage. And then we've got our hatch. Our docking port. There we go. Make this a... We'll just call it upper mid. Cargo. Command center. Or command room. Gunnery. Second gunnery down here. And then our ballasts. So make this ballast C. Ballast B. And ballast A. And once we've got the rest of the holes defined, we're going to come down here uh, because we need to make sure that we're actually going to be able to control the buoyancy of the ship. And I'll show you how we do that in a second. So we've got the armory here, and then our airlock. And I believe that's everywhere. If we come over to character mode, to open up the status monitor, we can... And there's no power. So never mind. Alright, so if we take a look at the ballasts and we select them all, we want to look at this optimal neutral ballast level here. You want this to be as close to 0.5 as you can. 
since this is really just an example, I'm going to leave it at 0.553 because it's not a big deal. But uh, you want to get that as close to 0.5 as you can once all the ballasts are selected. So if, but if we take a look here, and we see neutral ballast is 0.553, if we come over here to the navigation terminal, there is a setting in here, neutral ballast level, and we can change this to 0.553 to reflect what our ballast tanks need. Just make sure that took, yeah. All right. So that is defining the shell and the holes of the ship. So the next thing you got to do is, uh, or the next thing I do is lay everything out and get our backgrounds in place. So we're looking at back walls. And for, I'm going to start with the dead zones here. And so for these, just, I just grab a texture set all these to zero to make it black and then drag it in place and in order to get everything properly covered you'll probably need to copy paste a few times to get everything lined up and I'm going to hide the holes here to make things easier and we just stack up the back walls until everything is covered and you can't see any holes in the textures. So we'll do the same thing in these dead zones. adjustments there we go And then one more. All right, now we need backgrounds for all of the other rooms. For the engine room, since we've got uh, an area here that's slightly taller and we want the texture to carry, I'm going to grab the panels. The texture on, tends to work well on different levels. So we can place that one and then place this one. And then if we hide our items, we can select this one and change the texture offsets to make it line up a little better. Just a little wrong way. That looks about right. And you can play with it a little more to try and get it perfect. That's pretty good. So that's matching. I'll show the items again. In electrical, just grab pipes. There's no set way to do this. It's just whatever you think looks best. The one thing you do have to make sure of is that if you hide the items, 
wherever there's hatches or doors, you want to make sure you don't have any uh, negative space between the backgrounds because that'll be noticeable whenever people are changing levels. I've got the airlock here. So I'll drag that over and then. something like that. I'll just do a continuous texture down all the ballasts since they have a door between them. Again, we'll want to make sure there's no dead space behind the hatches. center passageway there's no reason to not just have a continuous wall the airlock up here I'm just gonna put panels it's not terrible the reactor room put a rough wall in and I'm gonna move that over a little bit so the textures overlap And then the central passage, maybe some windows. And we'll adjust the texture. All right, about like that is fine. Okay, so now we've got backgrounds for the entire ship, and we can start moving items. Uh, so that the textures look proper. So we'll adjust the cabinets down so that they go into the floor. Medical fabricator up on its feet. Just making everything uh, grounded so that your players aren't wandering through the ship wondering why everything's floating. Diving lockers. Move this up a little. All right, so I'm going to scoot these over. Uh, a little more centered behind the periscopes for the coil guns just to clean it up a bit again these adjustments are just done using the arrow keys I believe that's everything. Okay, so the next step is going to be to wire up power. So we'll go into wiring mode, go into our reactor. The typical style is uh, red wires for power, blue wires for signals, but you've got a lot of options if you want to make it look nice. So we'll grab power out from the reactor and bring it up to our first junction box. Uh, I'm sure there are better ways to lay out the power grid so that it's not quite so vulnerable. I generally use this first upper left junction box as the source from the reactor and then snake it through the rest. Uh, and then the way the backup batteries work is they'll both be powered from this first junction box. And each junction box has a limited power uh, fan out of five. So you can only have five things connected. So this one will send power into these batteries. And we don't want the batteries to be constantly draining. So we're going to grab a relay component. 
which will allow us to select when we want the batteries to output. And the way we're going to do that is we'll grab the battery's power out and send it to power in on the relay. And then we'll send the relay's power out to this bottom junction box here. That way, if the captain decides they want to switch over to backup power because the reactor isn't working, the batteries will turn on and send their output to this junction box, and then since everything snakes through, that'll power the rest of the ship. So that means we need to have a signal to be able to turn this thing on. So it starts off, you can see the checkbox here for is on. So we want to uh, toggle the state. So whenever the captain hits a button on their terminal, it'll toggle it on. If they hit it again, it'll toggle it off. We're going to bring that all the way over to the nav terminal. Whenever you're scrolling, you can use shift to scroll faster. And we'll want to put this in signal out one. And then if we scroll down in the navigation terminals menu in the upper right, we can find these labels for the different uh, signals. So you can see it's just signal out one now. If we switch that to backup power array, then whenever the captain, whenever there's actual power to this and they have different buttons that they can press, uh, it'll say backup power array instead of signal out one. And so we have three possible things that we can wire up to the captain's terminal and we'll get to all of those eventually. So then I just hide the relay component back here. And then whenever you're tidying up the wiring. When you're in wiring mode and you select a wire, it'll highlight it, and then you can drag the ends of the wire to different locations, but if you hit control, you can make another node, and this will let you lay out the wire and make it look a little nicer around the ship. And so you've got cable holders down in the filter here, and you've got horizontal and vertical holders. So if you drag these across the ship, and then have a vertical one that comes down into the terminal. We can go into wiring mode, select this, straighten it up so that it fits within the cable holder, and then comes down into the relay. And you can see here it's perfectly straight down the holder. Uh, it's entirely optional. It doesn't actually do anything. These wires will not move if they're not in a holder. The holder is completely decorative. It's just a structure. So if we uncheck structures, you can see the back wall and the cable holders all disappear. That's because they don't actually have any collision. Uh, they're just decorative. So I will wire up the snake through the rest of these junction boxes and tidy it up, and then come back and show you how to wire up the different systems.